this blanket out of an old uh, red fox coat so I've made the body of it like this and I'm just doing the last section where uh, I'm making this for somebody and this is their red fox coat and this is their alpine marmot uh, jacket which I've turned into a frame uh, a border to put around the outside which I've pre-prepared and, and cut and measured so it won't bore you to death so now I'm going to sew this border on, cut the mitres and nail it to the final stage before we line it. So here we go. Over to my ultra modern machine made about 70 years ago. It's still the same. It still works the same. You turn her on, it's a V8. it up with the marks. <laughs> so this way it will, it will fit perfectly. Famous last words. Fucking thing now, John. The bloody thing now. So. in as we go so that from the outside everything just looks absolutely perfect which of course it will be as you can see it's up to the machinist me to make sure that the edges match up. That's the thing about fur, it's, um, it's not fabric, it does its own thing. Different thicknesses, different flexibility, different levels of surface tension, which is what we'll be talking about when we nail. We want all these different pieces to have the same surface tension at the end. See this one's a bit slacker than that one, so we'll push it to that side a little bit. way of using an old jacket okay so I've attached the last uh, border which is made of this contrasting marmot fur here so we've got Australian red fox here now these pat these parts of it I've already nailed so you need to nail fur furs worked wet you sew it dry obviously and then you need all these different panels to take on the same surface tension. So you must wet them and stretch them again so that they all become one. 
so they're all all uh, in one piece otherwise they're very wrinkly so you'll notice that the piece that i've the panel that i've added on the edges are wobbly and that's because it doesn't share the same surface tension as the panels here so on the front you can see you know how i've done that got one skin going up, one going down, one up, down, up, down, up, down, so that they form a square. And anyway, now I've added this panel on here. So what we need to do is to bring this one to the same surface tension as the other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it and wet a little, just the edge of the other one. And then I'm going to nail it all to this board, which I have ma made a pink chalk line the ch pink chalk line represents this line so I'm going to nail this to here and then I'm going to pull from there okay so that's what's going to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it uh, in this case you don't want to saturate it you just want to damp it and in this case I'm using methylated spirits um, methylated spirits um, rather than water when we're using new fur, we use water. When we're using old fur like this, so this fur is about 40 to 45 years old. This fur is around about 60 years old. And so if we were to add water to it, uh, it might not end well. Uh, so <laughs> uh, saturating very old dry fur um, can turn it into uh, liquid you know, like wet weedy bix or something like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet it with uh, methylated spirits. We don't know why, but it gives it tensile strength. I've tried other things such as isopropyl alcohol, that doesn't work. And turpentine and all sorts of other things, they don't work either. Only methylated spirits works. So yes, you just damp it like that and go around the whole thing. And I'm also wetting the original bit of fox, but not too much because I don't want to pull that out of shape. Get the old marmot. Now, when you do this, it also can dry out the skin, the same as it would dry out your own skin. And so what we do is after we've nailed, we'll uh, oil the old marmot to give it back a bit of moisture because it's um, we don't want it to go crisp and we want it to last for another few decades. So if we put some dressing oil on it afterwards, that'll compensate for what we're doing to it now, which is <laughs> hacking it out of an old jacket, recutting it, sewing it, damping it with methylated spirits, nailing it to a piece of plywood and expecting it to last uh, for a few more decades. So we have to be nice to it. But because it's marmot, Marmots are brilliant fur because uh, it's a burrowing animal, has a thick hide, and it's, it's almost unheard of for it to perish, rot, or, or deteriorate. So we love it. You can get marmot coats and things that are decades and decades old, and they remake really well. Give them a little bit of oil and a clean, and they come up brilliantly. I've seen really old marmot coats um, where uh, the thread because it's cotton has completely perished, but the skin hasn't. It's amazing. It seems it just seems to be one of those things. I always say that, you know, if they ever drop a nuclear bomb, the only things that'll be left is cockroaches and marmot fur. That's about it. Maybe cockroaches wearing marmot fur. Maybe. more pet, a bit of mess, doesn't need to be chilled. <laughs> I was taught this trick by the, uh, the old farrier who taught me and uh, when I used to speak to other old farriers they'd say Oh, you use the method like old Michael does. Duh! I don't know why he bothers. Why does he bother with all those old furs? And I said, 
because customers want them. They want their old furs so they can keep wearing them or keep using them. And, and you say, ah, oh, why don't they just buy new ones? <laughs> you know, but that's the kind of, that's the old school way of thinking that he subscribed to. But the man who taught me, he was, he was into recycling like a lot of furriers were and still are. You know, you've got a rack of garments that you made five years ago that nobody bought and the styles are dated, nobody wants them, but the fur's still good, you're crazy. You know, if you don't get out a new pattern and recut them, what a waste. We used to do that at Stephen Datner's if we had garments that weren't selling, we'd remodel them, change them. Nothing wrong with the fur, just make them again. Change the collar. Everybody went crazy for mandarin collars and they're so unflattering. I'm out of metho. I have to get some more. I should be doing a promo for the, for, the, for the methylated spirits manufacturers, but they won't even sell it to me in bulk. They told me to go to Bunnings. Anyway, so there you go. So we need your whole blanket. Use a lot of meths. This is thirsty old stuff hasn't had a drink since the 50s so at this stage you can see all the trickery that I've done to try and make it match up but it didn't quite have enough now yeah. do it. Any other dry spots I missed should be all right. Now fold it in like that so that the they meet edge to edge because you don't want it to evaporate too quickly and you do this no matter whether you're using methylated spirits or water but you let it fold in like that so that the moisture is absorbed right through the dermis because if you don't let it absorb all the way through and then you start to pull it if let's say that's the dermis and the moisture only gets to there and when you pull it the top part of the dermis will will rip and tear away so you need it you need to wait until it penetrates all the way through the good thing about methylated spirits is it penetrates really fast so we won't be long and then we'll be nailing it to the plywood so here we are we're going to nail this blanket we're just nailing the outer part so I've marked up the board I'm opening it up like this And now what I want to do is line up this line with the chalk line here. So you pull it up to there and you have to eyeball these things, ladies and gentlemen. You just have to Paste. chuck out some nails and use your fur pliers or your fur pinches, they call them. Ow. Of course, we only just tap the nails in because we don't want to permanently attach it to the board. And hopefully it will all line up perfectly, just as I planned. Okay, that one in the corner. Now also, this is I have mitered these corners, so you need to tension the miter as well while you're doing it. nice square edges nobody wants a wobbly edged rug well sometimes they do i like it when people say just do it random 
<laughs> I just want you to just randomly join them together, and whatever happens, happens. And I say, I always say, well, that's just ridiculous. There's no such thing as random. They might look random, but they never are. There's always a pattern. Furriers are like that. We're not random people. We like symmetry. I think that should be okay. And then brush it around. I know it's really low tech, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it? It certainly is. I see the line there. This is going to take takes usually about 45 minutes, half <laughs> to an hour. I know, but by the end you'll see why. Everything has to be absolutely perfect and square and neat. Not random. Oh, random. Just make it random. It's so natural. I wonder if I'll get some kind of methanol poisoning after years and years of handling it and absorbing it through my skin. Down. I'm just eyeballing this angle. I can change. That's a good thing about using nails as opposed to staples is that they're easy to change. See, just pull it out, put it back in. You can move. Fendi do this, I should point out. If you have a look at their stuff online, they still use nails. That's why you pay $30,000 for a jacket. Because <laughs> they do it like this the way they used to in the olden days. Nowadays, everybody uses staples, but you don't get the accuracy with staples. It's very wasteful, and you need a staple puller just to make a few simple changes. Whereas if you use your old fashioned fur pinches, although if you're making things on a commercial level, like when you're making hundreds and hundreds of garments, these are not practical. But I'm not, I only make one thing at a time. And people want to know why these things, why does it take so long to make it? If you saw it from the very beginning where it's a garment and it has to be stripped down to skin and all the bits in between, you wouldn't wonder. You'd go, why is it so cheap, John? <laughs> it took you 35 hours to make it. Other people say to me, is that all it takes? And you think, God, if it took any longer, I'd take my own life. 35 hours looking at the same item. That's, that's a lot. Some of them take a lot longer than that, though. Depends how many garments, how big it is, how many strands. You can get some mink coats who've got 38, 40 strands in them. I think this one's only got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten foxes there and... So there's 14 foxes there, and marmots, I don't know, eight, I, can't, I can't count. I don't know, anyway, there's a few. Do you know what a marmot is, ladies and gentlemen? No. It's a little animal. <laughs> it's a little animal. That's what an, a colleague of mine used to tell people when I worked with Stephen Gatners. Because we were told not to tell people too many details about the actual creatures that they might start feeling sorry for them. So I made the mistake of telling people what they were and how many of them were in the garment. You're not supposed to tell people that stuff. So Mrs. Jones always used to say, it's a little animal, no matter what it was. It's a very little animal. That's if it's a Herman. They're very little. I'm about to make, after this, I'm about to make a rug in squirrel and mink. It takes a lot of squirrels to make a garment, I'll tell you that. Not just 14 foxes. We have, still have the collar that we haven't used for this. But I might just leave it as a collar, put some lining on it and sell it. Yeah. 
Unlike most Australian red fox garments that we get in, this one's, the skin's excellent. So they're probably not dressed in Australia. They're incredibly good. Really stretchy and strong. Whereas most of the ones dressed in Australia are cactus by the time they get to this age. Okay, so now I've, I've nailed this line to the, <laughs> to the chalk line. And now I'm going to pull on this edge to flatten it, to flatten the marmot. And marmot's really good, so you can pull it quite hard. With some furs, you try not to pull too hard and you don't use your pinches because it's, you know, too cruel. It's too mean on the skin, but marmot skin's lovely and tough. So you can just use your fingers to stretch or you can use your fur pinches. Tell you what, if you hit yourself in the cuticles with these things, you know about it. My crikey. In those videos you watch at Fendi, those guys don't hit themselves in the fingers. Oh, they don't show it. They probably wait till they're off camera and scream. Ow. This is a bit fleshy around here. I don't like it. Mmm, the edge is a bit loose. I don't like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it further this way and further this way. That's a good thing about nails, see? You can just pull them out and you can use them thousands of times. For staples, single use. Same as fake fur, single use. Real fur, you can use it and reuse it and reuse it as long as it'll let you make brand new stuff out of old stuff. Bloody brilliant. So what I'm doing, I'm taking up the slack that's in the outer edge, I'm just twisting it in slightly, something also you can't do with, with staples. Staples are okay for new things, but not for remodeling. I also don't want this edge to change too much, but I'm, we can absorb a little bit of slack, I think. But see, I'm twisting it in this way to pick up the, the billow that's happening in this edge, which I don't like. I'll go straight for a while, just pulling straight down. Ow! Oh God. I'm just realizing this isn't, doesn't make great television, does it? <laughs> Nailing a rug, uh, but I do it for a living. Crikey. I think in the old days, the furriers used to keep the nails in their mouths and just spit them. But they were, they were called nailers and that's all they did all day, just nail. Nail, nail, nail. Those people still exist, I'm sure. Okay, so notice how the billow's gone out of the edge. Because you can just twist it a little bit and then I've picked up the rest of the slack in this corner. Just a little bit left there. It's because I added all these bits in later. Sort of lengthened the edge a bit and distorted this angle a bit. But if you're good at nailing, you can get rid of all those things. Here we go. So there's well, a quarter of the edge done. Only another seven to go.
Well, folks, here it is. This is the blanket all nailed. It's got its new marmot border. It's all nice and neat. Uh, after I left you last time, I let it dry and then I oiled the new part because the fur was old and dry. So it's been oiled. So once it's dry, while, what I did was after it dried, the metho only takes an hour and a half to dry and I just painted the oil on with a brush, but it's absorbed it now. And now I'm going to take it off the board. So normally you would use, you can use a, a nail pullers. They're a great all purpose. Right? You can do that if you're, if you're fast, like me. If it's a delicate fur, like ermine, or the fur is old and fragile, it's a good idea to do it like this. But if it's not so fragile, which this isn't, you can use this fabulous device, which is a nail puller. And you can do that. And then tip them in there. Fabulous invention. run them back to this little hole but for some reason that never seems to work that feature <laughs> doesn't work for me so you're supposed to do that but see there's always one that won't go I don't know where you get these nails anymore Probably some fellow in Greece who still stops them. Because Fendi still use them. No crappy old staples of Fendi. And we are the Fendi of Hawthorne. <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble for saying that. Probably sue me. Have a look, we'll have a look at the other side and see how cool it looks. A little bit crushed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, square it all up and then edge it. It's going to look really pretty. Mm, beautiful. I love that. It's very nice. I normally don't like mixing, you know, furs, but anyway, I'm, it looks pretty good. So I'll trim it up to uh, make it nice and square and then have a look.
Okay, so folks, here we are. We have finished the blanket um, or the throw rug, whatever you want to call it. So we have completed it. This much you've seen already on the tables. So we've got the red fox, we've got the marmot, and you've seen video footage of Bernadette finishing it, putting the, un the interlining in. And there it is with its uh, finished lining, which is lovely fabric chosen by the owner of the garment, of the, of the rug and with our label on it and there it is already Ta -da!